it's true that in order to be declared a saint, you have to be dead. In fact, you also need two confirmed miracles. But is that what sainthood is all about? Do you have to be dead in order to be a saint? That's the question that we'll be talking about today. But we begin with a more fundamental question. To be a saint is to be in love with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the risen Lord, and by that to be very much a whole person. Saints are people who are able to sacrifice themselves, and I think that means uh, doing something for another when you really don't want to do it, but you do it anyway because you know it's the right thing to do. Great uh, description or definition of holiness that I have heard is that it is the perfection of charity in our lives, the perfection of love, the love of God, the love of neighbor. That is to say the two great commands of Jesus made real and visible and fruitful in our lives. A saint is a person who in their everyday lives can really manifest the love of Jesus in a very generous, very open, a very humble and a welcoming way. To be a saint, I think, is, means to be a, a fully human being who lives um, a life that shows other people how to be at peace, how to be uh, happy and joyful, and to be uh, a follower of Christ and uh, someone who's seeking God. To be a saint, we got to be ourselves. we got to be happy. we got to believe that Christ is in us, and whatever we do, we do because of him. Only God is a saint, and uh, but he wants to give us this precious gift of sainthood by Jesus Christ, and it's a uh, greatest call, a noble call, and, uh, and everybody is called. So I think that most of us would agree on what it means to have certain saintly qualities. But to help us uh, understand a little better what it means to be a saint, I am now joined by Sister Marie Paul Curley, of the Daughters of St. Paul. Sister, it's so good to have you back. It's great to be here, Deacon Pedro. So you just spent a considerable amount of time researching saints for these two books. I did. Saints Alive, The Gospel Witnessed, and Saints Alive, The Faith Proclaimed. First, why, why do we need books on saints? Why did you write these books? Oh, Why did well, you co-write these books? I co-authored the books yes. with, a, with a, another uh, a wonderful sister, Sister Mary Leah Hill. We wanted to present the saints as real people and uh, that's so important because sometimes we think of saints just as like statues in a church yeah they already have their halo or they got born with a halo right and that's not really the case they're real people who leave who lived real situations and they can be they can really encourage us when we face similar situations mm -hmm. or face the kinds of situations that could kind of provoke the same feelings of, you know, this is hard or discouraging or depressing. Right. And how, how, can I, how can I find God's will, God's plan for me in this? How so, can I respond? So did you try to find different saints for different situations in life so as to encourage people? Oh, yes. Uh, we, we actually, one of the hardest parts was really coming up with the wide diversity of saints that we did uh -huh. because we wanted saints from all over the world. Yeah, different For sure, different all cultures. cultures and also uh, saints from all different walks of life who struggled with really different issues. Right. So, for example, we have um, venerable Matt Talbot, yes, saint, uh, saint, you know, patron of really of people struggling with alcoholism and addiction, right. and he's wonderful. But he's such an understated saint. I, I don't think uh, well, not a lot he's of people not even have heard about yeah, him. and he hasn't yeah. he's not canonized yet. Um, and so, really picking saints, especially people who were lay people, because there's a right. lot of people who think, oh, holiness, it's for the priests and the nuns yes. and the deacons, yes. um, no. but, <laughs> but not for the regular no. person, not, not for the regular Catholic in the pew. Yes, I know. But I know. that's our call. Okay, so why uh, gospel witnessed and gospel proclaimed? Is that what sainthood is about? Yes, absolutely. Proclaiming um, the gospel. Proclaiming the gospel oh. and living, well, to proclaim it, the first way of proclamation is living the gospel. Okay, so yes. that's the first kind. Um, but then also, uh, we also talk about the faith proclaimed in, a, in the sense of the Beatitudes. Mm -hmm. You know, we matched, uh, this was fun too, matching a saint with a Beatitude, a Beatitude yeah. and matching a saint with a sacrament. Yes. Because yeah, really yeah, yeah. the sacraments are the way that, the ordinary way that Catholics receive grace in our mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And we have sacraments for all the important moments of our lives, and then we have the sacraments that help us, you know, daily or weekly or monthly on our journey, like the sacrament of reconciliation or mm -hmm. participating at Mass. And so we sometimes don't think, well, how did the saints receive the grace from the sacraments, and how did they right. live that? Right. And it actually, you know, I thought, how am I going to find a saint for confession? It wasn't very hard. Right. I had to actually whittle it down. I had a lot of contenders for the Sacrament of Reconciliation. It's, and, and it's more than just some person who loved going to confession. Yes, yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Very, saints who, um, who really took the grace of the sacrament and let it blossom in their lives, right. let God really work in them. Right. So great confessors, and then, uh, and yeah. then those who use the grace of the sacrament. So Now, Pope Francis recently... Uh, uh, granted an, an exclusive interview interview to a, a series of Jesuit publications, and he said that he associates sanctity with patience. I love this, mm. uh, with the day-to-day -day patience of, of of living. The mother who's patient with her sick child, or the father who who works every day, day in and day out, to bring bread to the table. Is that what you mean then by by saints who were ordinary, who oh, lived, yeah. you know, lay people living day-to-day -day lives? Oh yes, absolutely. So how is that saintly? Oh, because it's something, uh, it's something we all are called to live those daily moments in our lives. I mean, we're all, we're living them. And so they're God's gift to us. And so how do we live that as, as God's gift? Uh, I think that the, you know, the life of the Holy Family, the hidden life mm -hmm. of the Holy Family is really a great mystery that we don't think about a mm -hmm. whole lot. Uh, you know, Jesus and Joseph and Mary, they lived just the ordinary home life, carpentry, uh, woodworking, yeah. uh, you know, really humble stuff. And that was, they did that for 30 years, a hidden life. And so that, if that's what the Son of God did, that's definitely how we're called to live holiness too, in the little stuff of our lives. So, but okay, let's let's unpack that a little bit because I, I get the day-to-day -day drudgery, <laughs> which for a lot of people, that's what it is, yeah. or the mundaneness of, of getting up at five in the morning every day and, and, and getting your kids to school and making lunches and like it's just to get repetitive and trying to figure out what to have for dinner every night and driving kids to sports or whatever people do. Some people, the single parents that work two jobs. Mm. That's, I, that's ordinary, that's drudgery, that's hard. Mm -hmm. How does that, because we have to not just live that, we have to do something with that in order for that to allow that to transform us. We have to live it with love. It's, it's the secret of sanctity, of course, How is, is love, right? <laughs> How simple. <Yeah. laughs> um, we, I mean, when we look at when we look at God, Father, Son, and Spirit, and the, the communion of love, that's the kind of love that that self, that giving of ourselves um, in love to God and to to others. That's what we're called. So we can do the the littlest thing, filling a glass with water, but yeah. if we do it with love, then. That's that's a step on our way of saint on our way to holiness. That's it. That's, that's all it. we have to do. That's it. That's, that's it. all we have so to do. So you didn't have to write the book. You could have just written a, <laughs> a, a tweet, 140 characters. I'll have to tweet <laughs> that's this. It. Yes, the way is love. Um, okay, but wait, no. I, and I think I get that. Not that, and it's not. It's simple, but it's not easy because filling yeah. a glass of water with love is fine if you're giving it to someone who you like. But if it's that person mm -hmm. who's insulting you or that person who's difficult to work with or, or whatever, it's not that easy. Or suppose it's the last bottle of water that you have. And so sharing that glass of water. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, hard. We're all called to holiness. That's what the church says. That's what God says. Yeah. Be perfect as your heavenly mm. father is perfect. Okay, but uh, it's impossible. I can't be perfect. Well, you know, it's, when we use the word perfect in English, um, we, we have lots of... What, there's a loophole? <laughs> he actually no, didn't mean perfect. No, of course, of course I, I stand for the word of God. But uh, perfectionism is something that we often... Like, it's, it's kind of a default. Oh, a like perfect meaning, see. like I don't make mistakes. Exactly. Okay. That's not the kind of That's not what does it about. mean. Perfect means living in union with God. Perfect means living that life of love. Um, intending to do the best. It doesn't mean that we're going to have the perfect interview today okay, no, <laughs> without any, so far, without any stumbles. <laughs> um, but, but it does mean that what we do, we do with integrity, we do with love, we do with a desire to serve, uh, a desire to, uh, to bring about good for others. And so that yeah, I think that really kind of sums it up. It's not a perfection. It's not an absolute perfection. It's the perfection of who we are, becoming more and more who so we then, are. So then I can achieve that perfection 
in this life because we do believe that we will have full perfection in heaven. In heaven. I would say, and, and this is a trap that I fall into, I don't know about you, Deacon Pedro, but holiness is not something to achieve. It's something to let God bring about mm -hmm. in us because it's really about our relationship with God. Yeah. You know, if we know how loved we are, really loved, cherished, yeah. delighted in by the Lord, and then we're able to let that grow in us and then share that with others and help them to know that they're loved, I, I really believe that, it, you know, that's, that's the working of the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. it brings about that that deep happiness and fulfillment even here on this earth um but then to be perfected right. in heaven no so it's true that's it's we can't a good, do it on our own it's a good reminder it's Holy hard Spirit. because i mean even with saint paul that we run the race and we have fought a good fight i mean it's very goal oriented it is. and and there's nothing wrong i suspect with having heaven as our goal oh, no. but it's not something you know i did that i did that i did that i did that and therefore my reward is it's not quite doesn't quite work that way so it's a good reminder we're going to take a little break so don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. And we, we, when we come back, we'll continue having this conversation about what it means to be saints. And we'll also give you some practical suggestions. So stay tuned. Let us know your perspective. Email us at perspectives at saltandlighttv.org or reach us by mail. Perspectives at Salt and Light Television, 114 Richmond Street East, Toronto, Ontario, M5C1P1. Or call us toll free at 1-888-302-7181. Let your perspective be heard. My brothers, okay. because they are caring, they're loving, and they know how to treat everyone with respect. My grandmother, because she was a very good person when she was alive, but she, just helped a lot of people, made sure everybody was fed and stuff like that. She's a very nice woman. For now, my mom, my expert, yeah, because she's a single mom for like nine years, and she, uh, she, she's been racing for like uh, three of us, like my, my brother and me, so she's the most inspiration, uh, top person for now, for me. My mom, she's, um, she's always there for me, she's been a strong person in my life anytime there's any Mom, she's always got words of wisdom to tell me what to do. Being saintly means is that someone who genuinely cares about humanity, people around them and the world around them, and trying to make it better. So those were the thoughts of some people on the streets of Toronto. Now, Sister, would you say that you know any saints or that you've known any saints in your life? That's a good question because... I think I have lived and I mean other than me <laughs> we're all saints in the making um, yes 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 yeah. by virtue of our baptism in training. I, I think that in training is a good way to describe it I think that I have met saints and I think I've also lived with some pretty saintly women mm -hmm. um, uh, sister, some of the sisters in my community are really I've been so blessed to be able to share day-to-day -day living with them and witness witness their love right. uh, personally so yes uh, yeah, uh, the founder of the Daughters of St. Paul in the U.S., uh, Mother Paula Cordero. Uh -huh. I really feel, I, I don't know if she'll ever be canonized, but I hope so. She was yeah. quite a woman of faith, and I was able to live in the same big hot convent with her for a couple of years. Okay, no, and you brought up something good, and I think that this is really what we're talking about. So you said, I hope that she's canonized, yet in your heart she's still oh, yeah. a saint or saintly. And and I know that we, we joke, and I do this with my own kids, um, you have to be in heaven to be a saint. That's all it means. Mm. But once you're declared a saint, does it mean more than just someone who's in heaven with God? Oh, I think it, what it really means is it's it's a way of helping the church on earth to uh, to uh, identify perhaps some unique ways of uh, a unique way of going to heaven, or to have an example, or a mentor, or an encouragement. So as models, I think yeah, I think canonization is more about helping us encouraging us to to continue on our journey. To so be the saints. church declares, canonize someone to say, yes, this person is in heaven, yes. clearly, and this person is someone who we can model. Yes, yes. In, on our journey yeah. to, to sanctity. Yes, because they're in heaven already, so I don't think it matters to them whether they're canonized no, no, or not. No, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> so of, of, of any of these women who you've met or maybe growing up, Mm -hmm. a, a, a grandmother, I don't yeah. know, I think of my own grandmother, 
did any of those lives inspire you in your own religious vocation? Because that's how you're living your call to holiness. That's right. Uh, I would say, yes, there were definitely actually some sisters uh, who taught us in school uh -huh. who really inspired me to think about religious life as a way of growing closer to God. Surprisingly, I think my own parents, yeah, well, uh, in in many ways, really. I mean, they gave me their faith was real. Uh, my my uh, my dad has passed away. My mom's still alive. Mm -hmm. Their faith was real to them when I was growing up, and so seeing that really lived, even at a cost, I think helped me to realize, oh, this is something. I mean, first I was just watching it and saying, what is that? Uh, and then it's, oh, this needs to become mine. Like mm -hmm. I need to live my faith. And uh, so definitely I was inspired, so inspired by those. So to, to go back to the initial question, can we be saints alive? Yes, I and, think and, so. And what does that mean? And what does that mean? I think it really means, you know, really living that life of love, living in union with God, and, and, and that ongoing effort to uh, to to really do the will of God or uh, to, to allow God to work in us in everything. Despite um, the struggle. Despite the struggle, because being, you know, we, we talk about, oh, it's love, love, you know, but, you know, we use that word so much and it sounds really simple, but it's actually really, it really hard, hard to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. Try living in community <laughs> or living, you know, in marriage. Um, so uh, uh, is that why you chose to organize the book? Because you mentioned that, that you try to find a beatitude for mm -hmm. each saint or a mm -hmm. sacrament for each saint. Um, why was it important to organize it that way? Again, is it to help us model? Yes, yes. To help us to, to, to unpack that, well, the beatitudes we just don't unpack enough, I think, no. as, as Catholics. We, they're just, I mean, they're the perfect portrait of Jesus, how he lived on earth. But uh, they're some, they're, they're, we're called to live them too, and yet sometimes they can seem a bit abstract or they can seem impossibly high yeah. to reach. And so it was just, it was neat to be able to do that. Um, one of the other things that we do with the books is uh, our, the stories of the saints are novelized. Like they're really stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not, yeah, no, it's we, very you know, well we, we added dialogue. I mean, we, we weren't The that. writers are, are pretty good <laughs> on this book. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's well written. Um, <laughs> it but we, we had, you know, we, we didn't, we actually weren't there when, uh, you know, St. Francis was trying to decide what he was going to do with his life. We don't know exactly right, what so he said to his parents. Right, so you dramatize it a little bit, yes. So we added a little dialogue in yes. so that we could see these are real people with real lives in, page, in, yeah. in real circumstances. Now, some of the saints lived very heroically mm -hmm. and, um, you know, especially like a martyr martyrs, zone. Yeah. Um, and some people would say religious life is very heroic, and if we really live it to the full, I say this as a sister, if I really no, live it to the full, it's a heroic. Married life, I mean, true, it's sacrifice mm -hmm. and is martyrdom yeah, to a certain yeah. degree. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But we try to focus, you know, some of the stories are about the big moments, and some of the stories are about the little moments. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, doing something, you know, even though I've been doing this for a long time and I'm tired of doing it right. and it's really getting hard and no, but that it's that fidelity, that loving fidelity. Okay, so we've, we've mentioned a lot of this, <laughs> which is good, but maybe just to summarize. So what are some practical things that people can do if they want to take this call to holiness seriously while they're still alive? <laughs> okay, while we're still alive. Okay, good. And you've uh, mentioned love, yes, but w uh, filling a glass of water with love, yes. But yeah. what are uh, some other practical things? Uh, I think that, I, I think focusing on the ordinary, finding God and God's invitation to mm -hmm. us in the little, in the ordinary day-to-day -day moments of our lives is really key. Um, believing that God has a plan for us, even right. for today, uh, he has a plan. He he has something. If if we're here, he has something for us to say. And whoever's listening, he has something for, for them to, to hear. Yeah. You know, and or to share. Perhaps maybe it's not mm -hmm. for you. Maybe it's not for the listener, but it's for the person the listener will be talking to. Yes. Um, so th there's there's God's invitation in the little moments. So paying attention to the details of our lives. That you know, don't fluff them off. There. Right. That's the moment where God can can be present and can be inviting us to something. Mm -hmm. um, secondly. And this is the hard one. Well, none of it's easy, but the hard thing is when we do have something to suffer, to be able to uh, offer it with love, to be able to maybe in a way unite it with Jesus' mm -hmm. sufferings on the cross, knowing and looking for uh, 
in faith for the ways that it can bring new life to mm -hmm. us and to those um, whom we're called to, to serve or that we're called to even offer our sufferings for. Um, looking, you know, it's, the, living the cross isn't easy, but it is a part of following Jesus more closely. Yeah, a huge part. And that's what yes. holiness is about. Yeah, because uh, living the cross is not easy, easy, but it's an important part of following Jesus more closely. Jesus, very true because we, sometimes people say, you know, offer up suffering. And we don't really know what that means, but offering it as a sacrifice because when, you, when we suffer in love, it becomes a sacrifice and then that's redemptive. Yes. I think so. Um, in fact, to the point that people who suffer in love don't see their suffering as suffering. Mm -hmm. They just see it as love. Yes. Um, yes. We need to finish here, but we always leave the last word to the one who is the word. Absolutely. And so we're going to uh, conclude by listening to Matthew chapter 5, okay. verse 1. To 12. Wonderful. I'm sure you're familiar <laughs> with this passage. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So again, that's, those are the Beatitudes from Matthew chapter 5, 1 to 12. Mm. Final thought, sister. I think that we can, you know, we can live the Beatitudes when we have the thought of heaven in mind. Um, and it's, Jesus talks a lot about heaven in the Gospels, but it's, it's really, it's, it's where, it's our, it's our final goal, it's our final destination that, that those moments, that eternal moment of bliss, of really being embraced by the Trinity and knowing that we're embraced and, and, and rejoicing in that embrace and seeing uh, the marvelous ways that God has worked in our lives. And so, because being pure in heart and suffering persecution and being poor in spirit and merciful, those are hard things mm -hmm. to do. And so uh, sometimes being the weak human beings that we are, we need that extra motivation. and. Um, there were saints who talked a lot about heaven, and I think that's for a reason. You know, they, they were able to step back and see the big picture. I think the Beatitudes, while they're helping us focus on the little moments of virtue that we mm -hmm. need to live, they also encourage us to step back and look at the big picture. How is God? What is God's plan for me? Mm -hmm. um, it's eternal happiness with yeah. Him. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, the, the books are great, and, and a special, you know, I guess that's a plug here. Um, uh, Saints Alive, The Gospel Witnessed, Witness. and Saints Alive, The Faith Proclaimed. They're available through Pauline Books and Media, Media. Yes. at pauline.org is the website. Um, both uh, books written by Sister Marie Paul Curley and Sister Mary Leah Hill. Thank you so much. We've been speaking with Sister Marie Paul Curley. She's with the daughters of St. Paul, and as I just said, she co-authored these two books, the Saints Alive series. Maybe there's some more coming down the I pipe. I hope so. That'd be yeah, great. <laughs> very good. Very inspiring. Um, that concludes our show today. If you have any questions or any insights, as a saint that you want to tell us about, someone in your family, someone you know, write to us. Perspectives at saltandlighttv.org or send us a comment via Facebook or at Salt and Light via Twitter. I'm Deacon Pedro. Thanks for being with us. And may God continue to bless you and your home. <laughs>